but some of these ones I'm just like if they weren't there would I miss them and I am not sure that I would miss this one. Hello everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi my name's Claire and this is Yoli I make videos all about house plant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learnt over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And today I'm doing something that I have never done before, I've never made a video like this before, but I am going to take you through some of the plants that I have decided to get rid of. I'm not very good at getting rid of plants. I am a complete plant hoarder, but I will take you through all the reasons for the ones that I've chosen to pass on to new homes. Um, but yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So I'm just going to jump straight into the plants in, as always, no particular order. But the first one is the Skindapsis trubii Moonlight. And if you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know that I've kind of just had like a bit of an ongoing, I don't want to say struggle with this plant, but it's just not been, I think I had an expectation of how this plant would make me feel when I bought it. And it just hasn't quite done that. Like it's been an incredibly slow grower. I did remove a pot from around its roots quite recently. And if you have got this plant and you're finding it quite difficult, I would advise you to check, like check the roots and make sure there's nothing around them because a lot of you were saying that you had the same thing. But I really hoped that once I'd done that, it would kind of spring into action. It would be really happy and it's literally not changed. I don't think it's given me a single leaf since I've done that. And it's just not looking as healthy as it could be. Like I'm often kind of chopping back brown tips. It's got some discoloration on the leaf there. I haven't seen any pests on the plants, but I don't know. It's just kind of there. And I think with a lot of the plants I'm going to talk about in this video, I I feel like they are just kind of... They're not the ones that I look forward to caring for. And I think the majority of my collection, I'm so excited. It's, it's not all about fast growth, but I just find the growth that they give me very rewarding. And this one specifically, I just, it's given me barely any. And the growth that it has given me, I don't really feel has been worth the wait for me. Like I know this is completely subjective. Other people, you might be sitting there going, I've got this plant and I love it. That's completely fair enough. We're all entitled to our own opinions. But this one is just not not doing it for me at the moment. So yeah, I think I would definitely be passing this along. I was going to say the plant swap is actually coming up. Another plant swap is on Sunday, which is in about a week's time. So I might take some cuttings and take it to the plant swap. I might take it as a whole plant. I might give it to someone. I might sell it. I don't know what the plan is for these plants yet. I just know that these are the ones that I don't think I want anymore. So yeah. That's it. It's gorgeous. It's very, very beautiful, but it's just not ticking the boxes for me. And I think as well, and I was thinking about this, so I've just come back from a week away and I came back and there was so much to do. There were so many plants that needed attention. I've got over 300 in my collection and I just have got to the stage where I'm finding it just a little bit overwhelming. And I know with summer coming up as well, it's only going to get more intense. And whilst I love it, I don't want to feel like I'm kind of like cutting any plants short, if that makes sense. I want to be able to properly dedicate the time to like really bring out their best potential. And for that reason as well, some of these are a little bit neglected because I clearly don't care about them as much. So yes, that was a little bit waffly, but that's plant number one. Um, and the second one, again, if you've watched my other videos, then you will know that this is a plant that I've had a I was going to say love-hate relationship, more hate relationship with for a while. This is a slightly unhealthy looking philodendron lupinum and I know some people adore this plant and I know mature it looks incredible like I'll see if I can find a picture and put it on the screen but its foliage is just stunning when it's mature but I didn't this isn't a plant that I would have chosen for myself anyway. My friend Emma was getting rid of it she said do you want to give it a go because I'm having no luck and I kind of went, yeah, well, okay, I'll, I'll see how it goes. And granted, I haven't done everything I could have done for this plant. I haven't got it on a moss pole, but it just, I, I don't know. It looks like, at the moment, it looks like the philodendron mycans, but worse. <laughs> and I know that a lot of people do really want this plant and I don't have the desire to bring its full potential out, which I know might be a bad thing to say but it's just not, it's also growing very strangely, hence why I'm holding it like that. 
but it's yeah it's just not doing it for me so again I thought about maybe taking some cuttings of this to the plant swap but I do know that it is very very slow to root so I think I might just take it as a full plant I have also got other things I'm going to make a, a full video on that but I've got other things that I'm taking to the plant swap that are not here that are just cuttings of my own plants but the philodendron lupinum has just not been not been one for me uh, and then this next one. So this might seem like a bit of a shame because this plant's actually, I mean, it's rooted, but it's still kind of in the propagation stage. It's still in sphagnum moss, but this is a begonia snowcap. And I think it's so beautiful and it's really, really healthy, but I'm just not the biggest fan of begonias. I've tried so hard. I do think that loads are beautiful, but you know, when there's a plant that you can really appreciate in somebody else's space and then in your own home, you're just, it, I don't know, like, I love it. I love looking at it, but I don't always find myself that motivated to care for it. And as you can see, if you look at the stems there, it's lost a lot of leaves. Although that bit looks healthy, it was a lot fuller before. And that's just down to the fact that I haven't been that driven to make it do good things. So... Yeah, I think somebody else will absolutely love it and I think it will very easily find a good home. As I say, it is completely rooted. Oh, look at that little leaf down there. I didn't even notice that. Oh, that's actually really adorable. Yeah, it's not that I don't like the plant. It's it's just not one for me. So, yes, that is that one. Um, oh, I've got so many. I don't know where to go next. Uh, but this one is the bottom bit of my Philodendron Splendid and I chopped up my Philodendron Splendid fairly recently. I did the chop and extend method and oh my goodness, I will do an update on the top bit of that plant probably in the next few weeks because it is doing amazingly. It's giving me beautiful growth. It's adjusted really well. And I thought to myself at the time, I was like, well, maybe I will keep the bottom sections, potentially pot them all up together at some point, just kind of maybe try them different ways. But that the big section that I've got, the top section is just so huge and it's so full and its growth is so 360 that I, I don't think I really need to do that. And while I do have some duplicate plants in my collection, and I'm not against that at all, if you love a plant, by all means have 20 of them. But this one, I think, I, I think other people would appreciate it more than me. And this top bit especially has got a beautiful new growth point. It's really well rooted in the pole. And so, yeah, I think, I think I will probably do this one as cuttings. I think, as you can see at the bottom, there's some leaves that were lost and I feel like they'd make nice wet stick cuttings. So yeah, again, potentially plant swap. I'm not fully decided on all of the plants I'm going to take to the swap yet, but and these are the ones that this morning I kind of, I had a bit of a spring clean. I took everything out. I, as in like moved all my plants away from the wall. And I was just kind of thinking, okay, right, well, let's put them back. And what do I, well, like, what don't I want to put back in its place as much? And, and yeah, this one, I was just like, do I need it? I don't think I do. It's a gorgeous plant. Don't get me wrong. I love the plant, but I'm not going to be greedy with it. I think it will make somebody else very, very happy. Also, it's just started to chuck it down with rain, so I'm sorry if you can hear rain sounds. Or maybe it'll sound quite relaxing in the background. Fingers crossed. Um, but the next one is just a little Monstera adansonii. It's very dehydrated at the moment. As I say, I have just got back from holiday and this is my second day back, so I haven't got around to doing all my watering yet. And this one is very floppy. This one should also definitely be on a moss pole. I know it would be so much happier on a moss pole. And there's been so many times where I've said to myself, I need to do that. And I haven't got around to doing it. And again, I think it's probably just because on some level, I don't care as much as I could about the plant. So yeah, I think it's lovely. I, I love the Adansonii. I love the form of it, but, but I'm not doing the best that I could be for this plant. And I know that somebody else would. So yeah, I think I'll probably probably sell this one or give this one away as a full plant because it's not big. I could do little cuttings. I don't know. I'm really undecided about these. I, As I say, I literally just put them all to one side this morning and I was like, okay, these are the ones. But yeah, it is gorgeous, but I don't think I need it at the moment. Oh, I just dropped it. And then this next one, I always feel, I don't want to feel like I'm giving up on this plant, but I'm just, I'm just not 
loving it. This is my Philodendron Paraiso Verde and as you can see it hasn't really got any variegation on it. I know it has got stable variegation and it could definitely produce variegation but it looks very similar to the Philodendron, oh my god, the one that I can't remember the name of, that I will put a clip in of and I will put the name on the screen of, something like the Car Caralas, Car Caratis, something like that. It looks very similar to that. And I've got that plant and when I put them side by side, I actually prefer that one. And yeah, this one, I, I feel like I've kept it in all of the right conditions. It's been in my cabinet, which is really warm, really humid, gets really good light. It's on a moss pole and it's got fantastic aerial roots all the way down. So again, I could take cuttings of this plant, but it's a shame because it's one that I haven't had for that long. It was, it was really little when I got it, but it's grown very quickly. And I was so excited to add this plant to my collection. And I don't know if I'd feel differently if it was giving me variegation. I don't know, I've kind of looked back at the pictures that I initially saw of the Paraiso Verde and I do think it's beautiful, but I kind of think my tastes have changed a little bit. I don't know if I would rush out and buy that plant now. So yeah, this is just, I don't know, like a shift, a shift in my thinking and the way I feel about this plant. I, I think it's lovely and it's very healthy and it's giving me new growth. It's just about to pop a new leaf there. But again, as I'm saying about all of these, I just know that somebody else would be really happy to own this plant. And at the moment, I kind of feel like I've got two of them because of the Carol, 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 whatever it's called. So yeah, I don't feel that sad letting this plant go. And I think that's very telling because some of my plants, like if, if, someone would say to me, I'm going to take your allocation fry deck. I'd be like, no. But some of these ones, I'm just like, if they weren't there, would I miss them? And I am not sure that I would miss this one. So yeah, to the new home it goes. I probably actually, th thinking out loud here, but I probably won't take cuttings of it just yet, just because it is about to push out that new leaf. Or if I do, I would probably be tempted to keep the top cutting back for myself, just in case it doesn't work because sometimes the new growth can be affected if you chop it while it's producing a new leaf so yeah I think I think I might do this one as a full plant I'll keep you updated on this over on Instagram usually Instagram stories because I'm hopeless with Instagram itself but Instagram stories I tend to post updates and stuff like that so if you are on there then I will let you know what happens with all of these and if I do decide to sell any as well or just give them away I usually post stuff like that over there too so if you're interested then um then do that go go follow me um but the next one is another one that I really haven't had that long I actually only got this plant three months ago and <sighs> I think I kind of regret buying this plant it is one that I'd wanted for a while it's the philodendron Bell Marks fantasy it's still very juvenile, as you can see, and it is capable of sizing up and looking stunning. It's one that I kind of, I don't know if anybody else gets this, but it's a plant that I feel like I idolised for quite a long time. I looked at pictures of it and I was like, oh my God, I would love that plant. And I really enjoyed it for the first few weeks. And again, I know it needs a moss pole. I know it's not going to size up without a moss pole. But I, I just kind of, this, this really doesn't happen very often, but I just didn't feel the urge to care for it like I was kind of just doing it as a tick box thing I was like right okay yeah moss is hydrated it's in the right place whereas with my other plants that I feel really connected to I really kind of take my time to properly I don't know like properly think about what they need and I haven't really done it with this one and again maybe that is just because I've, I've been really busy recently and maybe plant care just hasn't been at the top of my list in the way that it is always and I think it's really important when you've got lots of plants because they do have like especially if you've got lots of them and they're tropical plants they do have a lot of care requirements to just take on what you can really like what you can actually really deal with at that point and because I haven't had a clear out a clear out a pass on in a while I've just I've just hoarded plants I've got to the point where although I'm still loving my plant care it is it is from time to time feeling quite overwhelming especially if I've got a busy week and then I think to myself right okay if I need to go through and water the majority it's probably going to take me between I mean if I'm doing a pest check a water a dust all of that sort of stuff 
it's realistically going to take me about six hours, which is a very long time. It's pretty much a full day. So yeah, I think any that aren't bringing me as much joy as they should be are going on to new homes. And that one definitely, definitely is. But it is beautiful. I do love its foliage. It's not as great as it could be at the moment. As I say, I'm not bringing out its full potential. And for that reason, I don't think I deserve to be caring for it right now. So that is that one. And also recently, I chopped up my philodendron sodoroy af. I say recently, I think it was about two months ago now, roughly, that I chopped it up. And I was left with lots of wet sticks and cuttings of the plant. And this is one of them. And I've actually got a few of these. I am going to keep one back for myself just because I kind of want to prove to myself that I can do it because I haven't had much luck with the plant. But because it's a crawling plant and it will eventually take up a lot of space, I just... I, th I, th I can't keep all of them, even if I put them all in a trough planter, it would get very full very quickly. And although I really love it, I think it's so beautiful. It's the, the Sodoroy Aff is one that I feel like quite a lot of people don't own. I know a lot of people have got the Sodoroy, but I just think that this would make someone else a lot happier than it's making me. And as I say, I've got, I've got more. So, so yeah, this was kind of an easy decision. Although I, I think, I think like the, the trap that I get into a lot of the time is that I like to have plants in literally every single space of my house and like every single corner I like to look somewhere and there's always greenery and well I do I do still love that like I still do want to have a very green house it does just mean that I'm sometimes I don't know I don't necessarily take time to appreciate the plants that are just kind of I want to say like space fillers and I think this one at the moment is just kind of a space filler. It's very rare that unless I'm watering it, that I kind of pick it up and look at it and appreciate it. And it deserves to be appreciated. So yeah, on to a new home that one goes. And oh, okay, I've got two more and I'm going to leave that one till last because I think you guys might be quite surprised. Oh, I've got three more. Okay, I lie. I'm going to still leave that one till last. I've got one that is a little bit of a like, oh my God, I can't believe you're getting rid of that. Uh, but this one, this next one, is the Philodendron Melanochrysum, and this plant's just not doing great. I have also got another Melanochrysum in my collection, but this is my bigger one. It lost a lot of leaves down the bottom. It had thrips very badly, hence the little sachet. And I do really like the Melanochrysum, but I just, I've had, I really haven't had that much luck with this plant. I've always been able to get it to grow and look relatively healthy, but i found that it always reaches a certain point and then things start to go a little bit wrong. And it's probably just that, I, I don't know, I'm just not being vigilant enough with my checking and my watering and all that sort of stuff. But if you've been here on my channel for like the last year, then you'll know that the first time my melanochrysum got thrips when I went away on holiday and then it got root rot and then I chopped it up and then I tried again and then I got new ones. And this is one of the propagations from the original plant I actually want to say about two years ago now, but I love it. I think it's beautiful, but it's it's just, yeah, it's, it's not the one for me. So I think what I'm going to do is take some wet stick cuttings, probably take some lovely leaf cuttings as well, because although the foliage is a little bit damaged, like you can see there's a big rip in that leaf there, it's got it's got lovely new growth and I think it would grow really well. And I have got a much smaller one as well. So if at some point I go, oh my goodness, I want this plant back in my collection, it's not like I can't try again. So yeah, I feel a little bit sad. I wasn't I wasn't quite sure about this one, but I just think that in a few weeks' time I probably wouldn't notice that much. Like if I think about some of my other plants and someone was to say I'm gonna take that out of your collection, I would probably be like, okay, well, maybe I'll forget about it. And I would just kind of mourn that plant and feel really, really sad about it. I don't think I'm going to feel too sad about this one. So I think that in itself is quite telling. But the penultimate plant is, again, I'm going to take some cuttings of this, but the Monstera Escaletto, and it is leggy as anything. Look at those runners. They're absolutely crazy. Um, but I was really happy to acquire the Escaletto. I think it's got a beautiful form, quite similar to the Adansonii. Ooh, I think it's very lovely. Um, and again, that I think probably just down to me, I haven't got it on a moss pole, so it has got very runnery. It's tried to just kind of like find the light, find something to grip onto. 
But again, like, I just don't think I've had the desire to do that. Sometimes when I say to myself, like, right, this plant needs this, that plant needs that. And then I find myself dragging it out. I'm like, why are you dragging it out? Like, why, why don't you want to do this for the plant? And often it's just because I, I don't know, I, I don't care as much as maybe I should or I could. And this one was another one that I got from my friend Emma who was giving it away. And I did want this plant, but I maybe just wasn't quite ready for this plant. So I think what I am probably going to do, I'm going to obviously with the runners, take some wet stick cuttings. I will almost certainly take some of them to the plant swap. But I think I'm probably going to keep this little top cutting here for myself. And I'm going to propagate that. And I'm going to see if my feelings change towards that. I'm going to get it on a moss pole straight away, do all of the right things and then yeah, probably chop up this bottom section of plant because it hasn't been very happy for a while. And I know that it's one that a lot of people still are really kind of like pining after. So hopefully it can find a good home. But then the last one, the last one I feel a little bit sad about. Um, this is one that at some points has been, especially before I moved house, probably one of my favorite weird plants. But since I've moved, it just hasn't done, it hasn't done very well in this environment. I don't know why. It is my Hoya Undulata Red. And as you can see, it's just not looking that happy. And this is, I would say, this is the Hoya that kind of got me into very obscure, weird plants that weren't necessarily like stereotypically beautiful. And for that in itself, I kind of don't want to part with it. But I don't know what it is about about this environment that's just not doing it for it. I feel like it's getting very similar light than it was before. I've checked its roots, its roots look good. I haven't really changed the amount of water I'm giving it or anything like that, but it's just looking quite floppy. It's giving me a little bit of new growth, but it's just not looking as good as it could. And it, I don't know, I don't know. I, I feel a bit undecided about this one, but I think what I'm probably going to do, and I think even if I was keeping the plants, what I would probably do is chop it up, root the cuttings and then and then pass them on. And maybe I will keep one back for myself. I'm not sure. But just recently, since like in the last five and a half, six months since I've been living here, I've just every time I've looked at it, it's kind of made me go, oh, like I remember loving you so much. And I just think I've fallen out of love a bit, which I, I do feel bad about. But yeah, it's a very unusual, very, very cool Hoya. I think that a lot of people would really want it. And I can, this is the thing, like, I can always, if, if I really miss these plants, I can always get cuttings of them again. And I, 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 it's not like I can never own them again, but I think just because when it's like, when it's been your plant and you've grown it from nothing, because this was very small and weird when I first got it and, I feel very proud of how far it's come, but it's it's just not making me that happy anymore. So, so yeah, I think it probably will be finding a new home. And those are just the ones that I went through in here. I have got some in my bedroom that I was thinking, oh, well, I mean, I, I need to go through my bedroom plants because I haven't really got onto them yet. But in this space here, I've got the majority of my plants and those are the ones that I think I will be getting rid of. And also, getting rid of the plants if I can then get on top of all of my other plants and get back to a stage where things feel more manageable then I can start bringing new plants into my collection and I don't think that's a bad thing I know I keep saying that but I just want to reiterate that because I know it can be such a like I don't, I don't know as I say I have got comments before of people being kind of very disappointed at the fact that I'm not enjoying a plant and it's so personal it's so personal you're the one that's caring for it you're the one that's doing everything to it and why would I, it's not fair to the plant if if I'm not doing what it needs and it's not happy. So yeah, those are my, however many that was, those are my ones that I'm going to be getting rid of at the moment. If I find some in my bedroom as well that aren't making me happy, then I will potentially make a part two to this video. But do let me know in the comments if you've got any plants that you're kind of falling out of love with, not getting on that well with. I'd be really interested to know. It's it's good to know that we all go through it as well. Like, I don't kind of get a plant to go, right, this is my forever plant. But yeah, that's that's those ones. I'm going to stop yabbering now, but I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video.